Welcome, welcome to the show. It is me, it is me, your girl Labora Lee, aka Cat Lee, and you have now turned into Ambitiously the Podcast. All right, so today, you know, it's a, it's a it's a it's a good day. Today is a good day, and I'm gonna tell you why in a second. But what you need to know is today is Wet and Wild Wednesday. Today is the day that we get into a, adult conversation. We talk about it. Um, you know, we get into some things and we, you know, sit and have a little chat, you know, grown folks stuff. And um, as you can see, the title for today's show is Know Yourself. And I'm going to tell you why I named it that. But before I do that, let me do this. Know that the phone line is open and available. Hold on. Let me make sure. Um, open and available, 443-850-4828, 443-850-4828. The number is scrolling at the bottom of the screen. You should see it, you know, or whatever. Um, also, remember to like, share, and subscribe to this podcast. We need every like, every share, and every subscription that we can get. And that's that's real. Like, that's the realest words I ever spoke. We need them, you know? You guys um, is what keeps the show going and keeps us, you know, in the zone. But anyway, for before I get into all of my shenanigans, got to go to a quick commercial. I'll be right back. What they're offering might just have you in the mood to get naked. Flex offers $100 off a six-pack of wine for $39.99, including shipping. Again, the offer is $100 off of a six pack of wine for $39.99 with shipping included. These are not small bottles of wine. These are your normal size bottles of wine and you're guaranteed to fill your wine cellar or have a really good time. <laughs> Get it now, y'all. Get it. So, um, like I said, today's subject matter is about knowing yourself. And there's different levels to knowing yourself. I'm I'm, going to leave the more spicier um, conversation about knowing yourself um, for the, you know, the end of the show, because, you know, it gets a little, a little bit salacious. Um, Let me see. Hi, Ma. You might not want to watch this one. Well, at least get off at at the end so that you won't hear my little potty mouth. I love you. Y'all, my grandmother is in the building. Hi, boobs. Um, so, I love you, Ma. Um, don't take any of this personal, but sometimes we have to have these conversations as adults. We we just need to have them, so I'm going to have them. I'm going to have them today. Um, the first thing I want to deal with when it comes to knowing yourself, well, I guess, let me see how I want to put this in the right. I want to have it in the right order. Um, the first thing that you need to know about knowing yourself or one should know about knowing themselves. And like I said, I'm not a um, a counselor. I don't give out advice because I feel like it's no way that I could give anyone advice when I'm still trying to figure out life myself. Um, but I will say this. The first thing, the first part of knowing yourself is this being okay with being alone. The only way that you can really get to know yourself, I feel, is if you are okay with some alone time. I take a lot of alone time and I don't mind it whatsoever. It it helps me process my thoughts and, you know, where I'm going with this. Again, my grandmother is in the building, so be on your best behavior. Ma, I love you. Get off of here towards the end, okay? Because I don't want you to hear everything that I'm about to say. I'm your granddaughter and you my boo and I just don't feel like you should really be listening to all the stuff I say even though you're a grown woman with children you my grandmother so I don't even know why I'm tripping but whatever so being okay with being alone is first um you gotta have your time you can't reflect on who the hell well I feel like anyway you can't reflect on who exactly you are if you don't spend some time with yourself nobody else and it's hard especially when you're a parent it's very hard to, to find that that space for a long time um but it's necessary and so you have to carve out some space just for you so you can be alone meditation is good for that too i like meditation actually 
Um, exercising is good. That's why I take my long ass freaking walks and don't care about it. Like, hey, man, you want to be skinny? No, I don't want to be skinny. That's really reflection time. Um, that's really part of my alone time. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a chance where I can really sit down and think about the shit that I got going on. That's just how it is. All right. So we're going to keep it moving. Um, expectations of others. Um, it's your job, really, to let people know what you... Because everybody in life, I don't care what direction you go in, who said what and how they said it and how they want you to feel about what it is that they feel. Everybody has expectations, right? And I talk about expectations a lot because I'm still on my journey. I'm still on my path. I'm still learning. I'm still getting to know myself. But um, what I found in this journey of getting to know myself is it is your job to let people know what you are capable of giving. So... For example, I'm going to give you an example real quick. Let's say that you decided that you are, you, you want to date, you want to date someone, right? Now, generally, my belief in dating is I'm dating you so that we can get to the, the committed relationship stage so then we can move forward and get to spending our lives together. That's my whole purpose for dating. I don't know what y'all out here doing, but that's my whole purpose. Like, okay, get to know know you we get to that space where we are in a situation well not a situation but a, a relationship and then eventually for progress we move on to that next chapter of our lives where we start making decisions about our life together um but in order for that process to happen properly i oh know my air quotes properly you have to know what you're you're capable of giving to the other person because they're going to want certain things. Oh, they totally going to want it. They going to want all of the, you know, the glitz and the glam of what they think a relationship is supposed to be. And I'm here to tell you, Bo, no relationship is ever going to be the way that you expect it to be. So when you start dealing with people and get to that stage where both y'all have to have the conversation about what it is that both of you guys are capable of giving. It's some things like, I might want to spend time, well, I know, this is knowing yourself. Time, that's very important for me when it comes to relationships. So as we're dating, this is where those conversations come in. I want, I want to be able to spend time with my significant other, as much time as I possibly can get. Now we got lives. We out here doing things. I'm out here trying to build an empire. You out here trying to build whatever you're trying to build. But at the end of the day, when you decide that this is the person that you want to be with, time is necessary. I I want it. I don't expect it because everybody doesn't give you what exactly you expect. So as the person who the other person it is my job to tell you that I'm not capable of dealing with somebody that does not have time for me. I, I, I can't. I'm not capable of being in a relationship with somebody or I'm not capable. No, not the relation. Just in general, and I said I was going to save this for the last, but I'm going to bring this up in this particular. I'm not capable of being in a situation where we start having a physical relationship um, you know, knocking boots, getting down to the nitty gritty, um, you know, <laughs> bumping uglies and all of that stuff. And, and then we not doing that at all. I can't, I'm a physical person. I want to be touched. I want to be held. I want to be caressed. I want all of that. So if you can't do that, then it's your job to tell me that you can't do that. Just like, like if it's certain things, I see something that I do might say. Um, I want a woman who is, okay, this is something I'm not capable of doing. And I know I'm not capable of doing it because I got so many goals and aspirations. I want a woman that's going to sit home and keep my house clean and cook my, my food all the time and 
I can't do that because I'm trying to build something. I, I'm not going to run myself ragged for the sake of what, what it is that you want. So I can tell you now, will I cook you dinner? If you're m my man, absolutely. Absolutely. It's just not going to be an every night thing. Am I going to keep my house clean? Not because you want me to keep my house clean, but because I just don't like a dirty house. But it's not, I'm not capable of giving you that kind of, you know what I mean? I, that kind of promise. I'm not capable and I don't make promises that I do not keep. I refuse. So I'm not capable of being just a meager little housewife. I'm not. I'm trying to build an empire. So if how am I going to do that and just be a meager housewife just catering to you all day long? And this is not the old days, baby. So you can't expect that anymore. Sorry. And especially if you want me to go out there and work just as hard as you working, please don't expect me to um be sitting around just, okay, I'm going to cater to your every woman need. That's not happening. It will never happen. It's never going to happen. But I know what I'm capable of giving. And I hope that the person that I decide to eventually be with is understands what they're capable of giving. And then maybe, maybe, just maybe, we'll have this nice little happy life together. Um, but it is a, definitely a big thing, understanding what you're capable of giving and what you're capable of doing and what you are not capable of doing or what you are not capable of giving. And that's just not in a relationship. That's friendships. That's family ship. I don't care what kind of ship it is. If you can't do that, then make it known that you're not capable of doing it at that time. And people gotta have lives and things that they got going on. So if you're not capable, you're not capable. Um, set your boundaries. This is part of knowing yourself. Setting your boundaries is a very important thing. Let me say this. A lot of times we go into, again, this applies across the board, but friendships, relationships, family ships. We go into these situations um, and we don't set our boundaries. We don't say, all right, look, this is not what I'm, I'm not for this. I'm not, I'm not, I can't. You know what I'm saying? Let me see. Um, hi, Derek. Hi, Derek. Um, thanks for the love, hon. Um, but um, yeah, I, you you go into these situations and you don't set your boundaries. So now they just run around. It. They doing whatever the hell they want to do. They treating you how they want to treat you. They talking to you how they want to talk to you. Um, they're doing the most. But it's because it's, and I hate for people, I hate because I'm going to get hate about this, but I don't even care. It's because you did not set your boundaries. You did not say, oh, this is not what I'm going for. I ain't with this. I can't, I'm not, I am not capable of dealing with that type of behavior towards me. I'm guilty of this. I'm very, very guilty of this for a long time. I didn't set my boundaries. So people just did what the fuck they wanted to do. And then I got tired of it and I got out of them situations. Like, all right, I eventually, eventually, I came to the point where I wanted to set, but all right, you know, I'm tired of it. I don't like how this is going. So I'm setting my boundaries. I'm out of here. Like, um, my boundaries is really back then. Now I'm more verbal about it, but I've been in situations. Well, one, one, most people know that once upon a time, I was a married woman. And um, so a lot of times, you know, his friends will come in and be like, she is so um, submissive. And, you know, she 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 just does the things that a lot of people want in their expectations which is she clean the house she cooks she clean um she served you because i was i was definitely making sure when i made him a plate i brought it to him fork knife or whatever else he needed and that was that but it wasn't good enough for him and then i eventually realized it wasn't good enough for me what i'm setting my boundaries i don't want to do this no more so I set my boundaries. Um, and again, back then, my boundary, part of me setting my boundaries was like, all right, we doing this. I'm breaking out. I'm out of here. I can't. I can't. Oh, you running. I'm not running. I'm getting the fuck out of here permanently. I'm not running back to you. Um, look, if you want to consider me, it, me running away, I'm not running. I'm walking. But what I'm telling you is 
is some shit. I'm just not uh, Doc not in here because normally if he was in here, I would not be cussing this early. But some things I'm just not willing to, you know, just deal with because this is what you want me to deal with. I'm setting my boundaries. Um, so I think setting your boundaries is a big, big part of getting to know you yourself because you know what your boundaries are, you know what your limitations are, you know you're not with it. You feel me? But it takes a lot to sit down and register what it is, what your boundaries are, because it's different people, different situations. And again, across the board, that could go for anybody. Boyfriend, girlfriend, friend, homie, homegirl, homeboy, um, family, mother, father, sister, brother, cousin, uncle, aunt, whatever. I don't care what it is. Setting the boundaries is a very important thing to your mental health, to your well-being. If you don't do that, then you're going to be going crazy in your head because like, you're not, it's not going to register to you why they're doing the things that they're doing, why they're treating you the way that they treat you because you set no boundaries. So set your boundaries. That's a, a big part of knowing yourself. Um, and it's okay if the people you're setting these boundaries boundaries with are not cool with it like you know everybody's not going to like the boundaries everybody's not going to like how you feel everybody's not going to like um that you just not for they shit no more everybody's not going to like it but you're going to be happier your health your mental health is going to be and if your mental health is good you can get with the physical health too you just set your boundaries um and again, knowing what you are willing and not willing to put up with. It's a, it's a simple, simple thing. And it sounds so simple, but I promise you, it's a lot harder than people recognize it is. It's a very, very, like, for example, people tell me, like, they'll say I'm yelling at them. I'm not yelling. I'm just very passionate about my arguments, you know? I was like, well, not arguments, but my debates, because it's not really an argument. I'm not mad about it. I hope that you're not mad about it. But um, if you can't deal with that as a person that I'm I'm dealing with in some form of um, some kind of capacity, if you're not able to deal with my passion, I get it. That doesn't mean I'm going to stop being passionate. That doesn't mean I'm going to stop being who I am. That just means that you can't deal with with my passion and that's okay it's all right who's mad i'm not mad you just, just can't deal with it again knowing what you're capable of dealing with and knowing what you can't deal with is a very big very very big part of knowing yourself so uh we are going to keep it moving where we at on time um do you wanna, i don't know if i want to play another commercial but whatever um know what you um now, knowing what you are capable of, because we're going to move it to a, a more enlightening um, portion of this subject matter, which is this. Knowing what you are capable, not of giving, but knowing what you are capable of doing. Knowing that really the sky's the limit. <clears throat> Let me get my tea, honey. Hold on. Tea. I need some tea. Really the sky's the limit, though. It's so many things that you you can do but a lot of times our minds and our minds we'd be like oh i can't do this or oh, you know this is going to be impossible it's not it's only impossible if you make it impossible people will tell you every day you can't do that that's not you can't do this but i don't think that people understand that the thing that's for you is not the thing for me um the job that you take might work for you or the lifestyle that you live might work for you, but it don't, it doesn't work for me. But I know that I'm capable of achieving something extraordinary. So let me rock out and you do you boo. And it's that simple. Um, but you know, I really believe in my heart of hearts that you should believe in anybody. Just not, I'm not saying specifically you, but anybody should believe that they are capable of doing amazing things, accomplishing amazing feats, amazing feats. Believe in yourself, um, which is the next thing that I'm getting to. Believing in yourself, believing in your dreams, believing in your hopes, believing in your 
goals, it's always going to be somebody around to tell you that what you dream of and what you want is some bullshit. And I'm here to tell you, baby, they're a liar. The, the only way that they're not a liar is if you allow them to be truthful about what it is that they say to you. That's the only way. That's how I see it. The only way that somebody can stop you from doing whatever it is that you want to do and you want to achieve is if you allow them to, you believe what they say. You can't do this. Okay, I can't do it. Uh, um, That's not smart for you to do. Okay, I won't do it because you said that's not smart. That's the only way that stops you. Otherwise, do what it is that you dream of. Channel your dreams. You know what I'm saying? Channel your your into power your empowerment channel that shit and make it work for you don't let nobody tell you what it is that you're not able to do or what you're capable of doing that's some bullshit and you know it like you know it it's some like don't let anybody tell you that it can't be done it can be done if you want it to be done apply yourself and get it done you know what i'm saying like nike just do it but don't let nobody tell you you can't get it done because whatever they dreamed of, they gave up on their dreams. And so now you're supposed to give up on your suit. That's some bullshit. And I can cuss now, so I'm going to go in. Uh, know that you can make whatever happen, whatever you want to happen, you can make it happen. Like, I'm dead ass. Like, every day, I, even with doing this podcast, right? It's not going to go nowhere. It's not going to do nothing. Da, 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 da. But I found an audience. And I rock with my audience. And I hope they come back. So I hope that they rock with me too. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I hear that all the time. What you're doing is not practical. Of course it's not. And nothing about me is practical. Um, it's not what normal people do. I'm not a normal person. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Um, I might be an alien. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, my, my 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 main boo is in the building. Hi, Doc, honey. Hi, I know you late, and you know I know you late because I wanted to cuss, and I didn't know if um I if it was time. If you move, okay, you finish moving for the moment. Okay, okay. So are you? I'm, I'm gonna ask you that at the end. I'm not gonna ask you that right now. But did you? Are, no, I'm gonna ask you now. Did you already move to the location that you were moving to? Or are you like in between? I don't know. It's not me. But I, I do know that you're moving, but yeah, I'm just wondering, inquiring mine. But um, yeah, people gonna tell you like, like I said, with this, like they, what you want to do? You you starting a podcast? Why would you start a podcast? Okay, between. Okay, all right, cool. I'm nosy. I'm tell me mind my business, that. <laughs> tell me mind my business. Um, but. You know, people will say like, oh, well, you're doing a podcast. That's not practical. No, it's not. It takes a creative mind to do the thing that I'm doing. Um, it's not a normal thing for people to do that. Go get a regular job. Well, no. See, what you don't know is before COVID, I had my own, own marketing company. COVID hit. Um, my business took a dive because money, everybody, people's money was not the same. Um, oh, I'm okay. I'm nosy now. Sorry. <laughs> um, but you know everybody finances were different the economy had changed things switched up so I took a hit when it came down to um, business because COVID hit but then we were on quarantine so I didn't want to sit idle and not do nothing so yeah I started a podcast now I love doing what I do and I don't want to let go of doing a podcast it's not something that I plan to quit once I started it, but is it practical? No. Is it a, a regular nine to five? Absolutely not. Do I have to hustle my ass off to make sure that I'm able to keep doing this? You damn right. And I don't mind it. Am I, um, do I have my struggles and my hard times and doing what it is that I do? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I do. But one thing about me is I refuse to give up on what it is that I aspire to do. I have a bigger goal just than, than just doing this podcast. The podcast is a part of that bigger goal, but I have dreams and aspirations and I'm a very ambitious girl, so I'm going to make it happen. But ain't nobody on this 
God-given planet going to tell me that I can't make it happen? So once you start letting them tell you that you can't do it, then you're not capable of doing it because you really believe the hype. You really have fed into whatever it is, the fuck that they said that you couldn't do. And now you believe that you can't do it. Well, I'm not set up like that. I'm set up to believe that I could do anything I put my mind to. I'm a mother and I teach that to my daughter. Whatever it is you want to go out here and do, just be great at it, but you could do it. Nobody can tell you that you can't do it. And if they do, they're a freaking liar. And she repeats that right back to me every time we talk. What did what, what did mommy tell you? Anything I want to do, I could do. And if somebody tell you that you can't, what are they? A liar. She it's some things I, I put in her head, but you can do anything you want to do. The only person that's stopping you from doing the things that you want to do is you. So make it happen. And don't let them hold you back. And that's what I'm gonna say about that. Um, so Wait, what time is it? We got a little time. I, those things are heavy on. Like, I was really sitting in here and really thinking about these things. And, like, life is weird. People are weird. It's a lot of weird. Well, we experienced that last night. Uh huh. It's a lot of weirdos in this world. Um, people are going to call you things. They're going to say shit to you. They're going to, you know what I mean? Like, last night I got called, um, not niggas, but I got called nigger a lot. Well, we got called, me, Doc, and, 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 and King Knox got called nigger a lot last night. Um, Yeah, last night was nuts. It was insane. I got to go in, and I didn't even post it yet because I got to go chop some stuff out and edit it because, and then re-upload it to YouTube because of all of the stuff that was going on, and I don't want any kind of complications. Um, But that's a little later. Um. Right now, it's still up there, but I didn't put it up there, so I'm not really tripping, but I don't want that to be a part of our show. We have a good time when we do the tap-in, so I really don't want that to be a part of our show. But the point is, like, last night, the word nigga was used a lot, right? I could take that and take it real personal. All I'm going to say is your mother. But <laughs> I could take that, and I could take that real personal. But the only way I'm taking that real person personal is if I really am a nigga and know the word, what the word means. A lot of these idiots don't even know. Well, they don't know that they are because they're idiots. You know what I'm saying? So don't take that. You know, don't take everything everybody says to heart, I think that's um, a part of knowing yourself too. If you know that you're not that, then why would you let it bother you? It don't bother me. Call me that all day long. I'm going to keep saying your mother <laughs> and I'm going to keep going on about my life. I'm probably not going to drop the link anymore though because people um, are out of pocket. See, Doc, Tally, Doc, Doc says straight up, they was idiots. They were. And so why would I let an idiot make me feel any kind of way about who I am as a person? Again, I'm a very ambitious woman. I'm out here trying to work towards my goals. So I'm not really worried about what you have to say and what you call me. And that applies to walking out here in this world. I've been called bitch. I've been called a nigger. I've been called, been called a slut, a whore. I've been called every name you could think of. Do I do I believe that's what I am? No. Well, maybe pimp, but no, nah, I ain't no pimp. But do I believe any of the things that people tell me about who they think I am? Especially people that do not really know me, have no idea what my background is, have no clue about the things that I've been through. And trust me, honey, child, let me tell you, your girl has been through some things. Abuse, um... Essay, I guess to say, assault. I've been assaulted. I've been through many, many things. Um, you know, um, like everybody, like you said last night, Doc, which is very important, but also, like, again, I stand on what I said on that too, which is everybody, even though you could come from the hood and your life could be chaotic and crazy, everybody's situation is different. So I hate that put people in a box situation because you don't know what my struggles were. You don't know the things that I've been through. And I maybe one day I'll tell it. I said I should write a book. I'm not even supposed to be here, to be honest with you. Um, I love him. He's not here anymore. God rest his soul. He's not here anymore. But my biological father kicked my mother in the stomach. 
I was not supposed to be here. I'm just relentless. I'm still here anyway. But so it's a lot. And he was very abusive to her as well. So it's a lot of things that we go through in life. Everybody's walk in life is different. Nobody's walk is the same. Everybody deals with things differently. Um, I've dealt with my situations the way I had to deal with them, though, and I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm resilient. I'm still here. I'm still pushing. I'm still doing what I came here to do, which is be great. Period. Um, so that's that. Now I want to get to the more sexual side. I saved that for last because one, I wanted us. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm surviving, Doc. I'm here and I'm surviving. And I ain't going to use none of what I, what happened to me as a crutch. That's one thing that I'm big on. That's not my crutch. That's not stopping me from being my great self. That's just the things that I've been through. You know what I'm saying? And I know that I've been through them. And if you're close enough to me, you probably know that I've been through them too. But it's just what it is. It's something happen and by me being a woman a lot of things have happened to me just because I'm a woman and people think that they can play with me but <laughs> that's why I carry Betty and Boop now play with me now huh um so I wanted to move on to the more sensual taboo conversation about knowing yourself <laughs> And I'm going to say, baby, do not be scared to know yourself. And you know what I mean by know yourself. And if you don't, I, I will elaborate. But know yourself. Why do I say, I'm big on that part too. Why do I say know yourself? Because when you get in them situations now, you, you and your partner or who you choose to be your partner at the time, I believe in having one partner. But, you know, it's people out here that believe in having uh, many, many partners. But by the time you get to that room with that person, you don't want, and it's going to sound crazy, you don't want them knowing more about you than you know about you. Like, you should be able to know the things that turn you on, the, the things that get you um, at the right place, you feel me? The things that, how they touch you, how you want to be touched, um, how you want them to to receive you I'm, I'm being very light because i really could say the other put it the other way but how you want them to receive you how you want to receive them um there's some people <laughs> what floats my butt okay. you know me. i'm just saying nothing wrong i'm gonna just say it because we grown with masturbation that's what i mean by knowing yourself but you do that then you find out things about yourself like it's very private i don't think i'm gonna give that information but <laughs> it's some things that i know i'm not capable of doing by myself multiple times but i know that when i'm with a partner and this is a great connection that my partner is going to be able to make me do that thing multiple times i'm a woman i'm supposed to be able to come in multiples but you know what i mean like <laughs> I'm just saying it is what it is. We're talking about it. I said today's topic is knowing yourself. And that's part of knowing yourself. I can't be in a room with a man and expect him to please me the way I want to be pleased if I don't know how to please myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, this, it just makes no sense. Like, I know a lot of women out here, and this used to be where Wet and White Wednesdays used to go, but I try to tone it down a little bit, talk about other things instead of just coming back to um sex because i felt like in my mind you know we we talk about other things other than when you're an adult you can have other conversations other than sex but when you usually come back there sometimes i'm giving um advice from professionals all kinds of stuff right but um you can't get expect to get in a, like fellas i'm gonna tell y'all something that some of y'all do not all of y'all but some of y'all yeah be the god yeah you get what I'm saying? Just be the guy to your own climax. Now, I'm going to say this. Like, hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm not knowing something, something. But anyway, um, I'm going to say this. A lot a lot of times when it comes to gentlemen, in my experience, like I said, not all of y'all do this, but some of y'all do this. Um, You get in a situation with this chick, right? And you expect her to please you in all the ways that you want her to please you, but you don't really know what it is that you're looking for. Or you get in a situation with a chick and she's extra. Like, for example, myself, when it comes to the, you know, 
adult taboo matters. You get in a situation, she might be over the top. And then you get in a situation with her and you find out that you don't like over the top. But in your mind, it's like, oh, yeah, this is great. She's talking all this shit. And then y'all get together and she backed that shit up. And now you're looking at her like, oh, my God, this whore. You know what I'm saying? It's not that. It's maybe she knows herself. And there's nothing wrong with you knowing yourself, too. That's it. Um, so it's important for y'all to know y'all selves too. That's why I say masturbation is not, you know, we're taught when we're young, don't do that. And that's not good. Well, some of us, um, especially on, on the woman's side, we're taught that that's not something that we should be doing. That's bad. Oh, that's horrible because you got to act like a lady and that's not ladylike. And you got to be this, you got to be that. I say the hell with that. I want to know how I like things. So when I bring myself to the table to give myself to someone, I can let them know how I like it too. In a nice, sweet way. You feel me? But they going to know what it is when we get up in there. Listen, these are the things I like to do. These are the things I like done to me. These are the things that I don't like <laughs> and I'm not willing to participate in. Um, you know... I know what it is that I want and I like. And so that is a part of knowing yourself. And a lot of people, they sit around like, oh, I don't do that. I, I remember, well, I hope not as adults now. I hope you don't do that now because that's the most retarded thing you could say. I don't do that. Why? So you you don't want to be pleasure. You don't want to you don't want to pleasure yourself. You don't want yourself to be fulfilled and happy. You don't want to be happy. You don't want to feel good. Like, why? Why don't you do that? I had a dude tell me he don't do that. And I'm like, you don't? So you never. You absolutely have never. That's some bullshit. Yes, you have. You did it once or twice in your life. I ain't going to say you did it all the time. But I'm going to say you did it once or twice. Threw on a flick. Um, threw on a, a chicka chicka bow bow. <laughs> Thing that nice round booty. And went to town. It happens. I'm just saying, never let it take over, though. But get to know yourself so you can know what you like. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Nothing wrong with getting to know yourself. So that way, when you go out into this world, you are the most amazing lover ever. Well, maybe not the most amazing lover ever. But you're pretty good at it because you know. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. So the last part of knowing yourself, or the last thing, but I, I really believe in knowing yourself. So that way you can go out there and, you know, when you get out there, you know yourself. So then you can teach them how to know you too. That's it. That's, that's how I feel about that. Nobody should have the power to know your body, your, you know, better than you do. Is that simple? Do I do that? Yes, absolutely fucking do. Usually I only do it when I can't get none. But because <laughs> I've been in relationships where I absolutely could not like, like I was in a relationship where my dude used to travel a lot because he was a musician. I had to know myself because he wasn't there to know me. <laughs> I was in a relationship, my marriage where he preferred to know the chicka chicka bow bow girls more than he wanted to know me. So I had to know myself, but I wasn't going to go out there and stop out on it just because of that. But, um, you know, it happens. You can, it happens. I, but the thing is, crazy part is I got to start, I started learning myself early. Like, I mean, not too early, but early enough. You know what I'm saying? I was like, okay, if I'm going to be out here doing this, <laughs> I need to know what exactly it is I'm doing. You feel me? And that's the problem, too. The motherfuckers go out here, just I'm just doing this and don't know what it is that they're doing. So now they're mad because it's not done the way that they want it done or whatever, but it's crazy. Um, But I believe in knowing yourself. Um, also in that department, I could say, um, I know that, yeah, I'm just saying, master your craft, <laughs> master yourself. You are your craft, <laughs> master it, figure it out. 
Find out what works for you. And then when you're ready, unleash it on the person that you're supposed to unleash it on. That's all I'm saying, Doc. That's all I'm saying. Learn the ways. Become a master. That's it. Doc, you said it perfectly. Maybe. Well, if I said it like that, then it pro- we probably wouldn't have a full show. <laughs> <laughs> know yourself um knowing yourself like one thing i know about me this is gonna sound crazy i do not like a jealous ass man right this is not sexual this is just something that i know about myself and um it took me a long time to figure it out because you know when you're young you dumb you think that shit cute like oh he jealous he don't want me talking to nobody else but the reality of the real world is this you go to work every day if you work a nine to five you're around people of the opposite sex. You, you go to you go to McDonald's. Guess what? You're around people of the opposite sex. Uh, you go to the grocery store. Guess what? Around people of the opposite. Go to the mall. The simplest shit. You around someone of the opposite gender. So, in my mind, the way this works is this, and this is this is part of me knowing myself. I can never be with a man who 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 can't. Like and I, the industry that I'm in, which is pre- predominantly a male-dominated industry, and every now and again us females sliding in when we can. Well, now it's changing up, but you know, back then when I first started, it was more dudes than females doing what it is that I do, and especially the genre of music that I happened to work in, which was hip hop, right? Um, but I found in my, you know, going through that journey of, you know, trying to build something and be something and become something, I found that I got into a few relationships with a dude who was just jealous. And I mean, jealous. Um, but see, all right, but self-control in a relationship is important. Mature people are respectful of that. Hey, yeah. But see, that's the thing. In my situation, it wasn't me not having self self control. I'm gonna tell you this: I, I don't go to clubs. I'm not a club hopper. I'm not big on. I don't want to go somewhere where I'm gonna see the same people. And Baltimore, Doc, you know, and Rock probably knows too because you both been to Baltimore. It's a it's, it's a city, but it's a very small city. So if you're going to the club, you're probably gonna see the same people every fucking weekend because that's what they're doing. They're going to the club, shaking their ass, and you're going to run into the same people. Well, in my opinion, that's not really my vibe. You feel me? I don't want to keep saying If I'm going to see the same person over and over again, I'm probably dealing with that person. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not out here trying to see these stupid asses in a club shaking their ass, especially now because I'm older. I'm, I've always been like a... I go to a nice little restaurant or a nice little lounge where it's chill, not a lot, too many people type of person. If you caught me in a club, though, it's probably because of work. I have artists performing at that particular venue, you feel me, Um, or something like that. But other than that, I'm not up in the club. That's not my thing, right? Um, But I've been in situations where I had to go to a club to work because my artists were performing. Or I had to go to certain events because... The people that I, my clients, it had something to do with my clients. But never once did I ever walk into the situation and be like, oh, I'm coming out here to be in somebody's face. No. For what? Why? And then I'm a firm believer in why am I doing my hair and getting all cute to go sweat that shit out? I'm just, that's not my vibe. So, uh, (laughs) but I've been in situations where like they couldn't handle it and they couldn't handle it because the industry that I chose to work in was predominantly males. I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that. Um, but predominantly male. So I don't like a jealous ass man. You want to rock with me? Then you need to understand that I'm a working woman. I'm out here trying to get to this bread. So, you got to rock with me. Go with me. Come with me to the venue. Come with me. But don't sit there salt, um, all salty and stuff. <laughs> and I'm mad because I think that you and this dude did that, 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 that. That happened in my last relationship with me and Knox. I want to say, like, last year, I interviewed him. He came, yeah, because that's when I finally was trusting enough to let somebody in my little studio, right? So he came here. 
Um, and he wasn't by himself, mind you. He, he had his um, producer with him at the time. Well, you know, his business, I think they were business partners or whatever. You know, they was doing business together. Um, so both of them was in here, but Knox was the only one on camera. At the end of the... Um, right. But at the end, I'm gonna put that on the screen in a second. But at the end of the um the 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 the, the interview section um session or whatever, um me myself and Knox, we took a picture, and I swear to goodness, I gave him the most churchiest, like you know the church hug where you like <laughs> you not close, you like fall. It wasn't like we was like we was like this, and we took the picture. Well, he had his arm around, me and I was like you know like this or whatever. And I promise you, um, they posted the picture on the, and the, the picture was posted. Um, I posted the picture as well. You know, talking about our great interview that we just had. It was fun. We kicked it. It was a vibe, right? I turned around and um, my ex was like, you all hugging niggas on the internet? You feel me? Yeah, strictly, yeah, EPMD, strictly business. But yeah, I turned around, yeah, shoulders and bottoms out, church hug. Thank you. So that's kind of what it was, you feel me? But um, and he turned, you all oh, hugging niggas on the internet. And I was like, oh, how dare you? One is I'm in a relationship with you, so I would never disrespect you like that. That church ass hug that, that we just shared. Are you serious? But he was adamant about that shit. And that's when I knew, okay, this is a jealous dude right here. Like, you real jealous. And for no reason, because it was the churchiest hug I ever gave anybody in my life. Ask Knox, he'll tell you that was a church-ass hug. I swear that was a church-ass hug. But yeah, he wanted he wanted beef. So anyway, I'm about to get to the love notes real quick. Um, the love notes. We call them the love notes because I used to call them show notes and Doc, well, I used to call them love and Doc used to call them show notes. So then we put it together and now they're love notes. Mm -hmm. Let me put that on the screen real quick so y'all can see how it work out, how it work out in the equation. Uh, <laughs> see, the equation is love plus show notes equals love notes. So it's time for the love notes. Um, yeah, jealous. I can't deal with no jealous ass man. You, I'm working. I'm working over here. Jeez, Louise. But anyway, um, so big love. I gotta show love to my people. And that was weird because me and Knox was not like that. We was just doing that interview. I was doing you know I me. Mean? I mean, maybe he had been on my show a few times. Now he on the show every Tuesday. So like, like now what? Um, anyway, love notes. Let's get to that. Hold on. <laughs> he on the show. Now, like, really? Love notes. It's all love. Thank you for all of the love. Shout out to my top six in the United States, the United Kingdom, India, France, Germany, and Belgium, specifically Brussels. I love you. Thank you for being so loyal and faithful to me and dedicated. Y'all be here. Y'all turn up. And I like it. Russia, Indonesia, Japan, New Zealand, Australia, Turkey, Switzerland, Canada, Mexico, Austria, Philippines and Kenya, I love you, darlings. Pakistan, Romania, South Africa, Nigeria, Brazil, Netherlands, Singapore, Spain, Japan, Ireland, and Nepal. I love you all. Thank you, my babies. I love you. Mauritius, Israel, Hong Kong, China, Poland, Tunisia, Venezuela, baby, the Czech Republic. Uh huh. See you in Portugal. Hi, darlings. I love you. Thank you for tuning into this podcast. The love is appreciated. Big shout out to my grandmother. I hope she, I wasn't too raunchy for her because she was in the building, but I'm just speaking my truth. That's it. Um, and so big shout out to my grandmother. She was in the building. Um, big shout out to Derek as well. He dropped in every now and again. So, hey, Derek. Thanks for the love, boobs. Big shout out to my boob doc. He was late, but he in the building. We ain't gonna talk. We ain't gonna tell Knox about this, dog, because he he will have a field day about your lateness because you're always on time. And he's usually the one late, but whatever. You're moving. I'm gonna tell him leave you alone because that's how I feel. Um, and big shout out to Rock. Thanks for coming through and showing love as well. Yes, yeah, I love over here. We love, we love, love, love. Yeah, I'm not for that. I'm not for that doc. I'm not for it because he'd be late all the time. You'd be late this one time. And if he knew about it, he would have a failed day. Could you be riding him? You'd be digging in his 
you be digging in his soul. Like, you always say something about his lateness. So I'm not going to tell him that she was late today. Shh, our little secret. Um, But yeah, that was the churchiest hug I ever gave in my life. I'm talking about when I was laying. One day I'm going to post a picture. I'm going to bring the picture up on the screen so y'all can see how churchy that hug was. But then what I also understood in that situation too, and the jealousy was guilt because he was doing the dirt. And so he had to reflect it on me. You know what I'm saying? He was out here living grimy and being dirty and doing dirty foul shit. And so in his mind, if I blame her, if I keep saying that she doing it, he used to do that a lot. And it was like, dude, you know where I'm at. <laughs> you got access to me whenever you want. But yeah, that was because he was being grimy. So watch out for the jealous people. Yeah. Well, it ain't come to him yet, I don't think, but it will. <laughs> It will. It didn't come not on my part because I'm not one of those people either. Again, knowing myself, not one of those people either that seek revenge. My the sweetest revenge I could ever get is leaving you the fuck alone and doing my thug thizzle, doing my thing. That is the sweetest revenge I can ever get. That cheating back and forth shit, nah, it ain't on me. So maybe he got his karma. I don't know. Maybe his karma was leaving me. I don't know what his karma is. I don't speak to him, but I know that. It was the guilt that made him do and say the things that he was saying. So anyway, <laughs> it was the guilt. It was guilt. So he was like, you hugging niggas on the internet? Even though it was a churchy ass hug, he felt like that was a good way to try to make it seem like I was doing shit when I really wasn't doing shit. I was a very faithful girlfriend to him for five years. I wasn't doing shit. I was happy. So yeah, you know what I mean? I was chill until I found out that he wasn't chill and he was being a little man whore, but whatever. Well, you got your peace. Yeah, I do got my peace. But uh, it, it helps in order to get the peace, it helps to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? To reflect on things. And I got to understand and that's how I know myself. This is how I am capable of dealing with all the fuck shit that I've dealt with in my life. Is talk about it. Otherwise, you're just sitting on it and it's festering and festering. And I'm a Libra. I've, I got a bad habit of doing that shit, just sitting on shit, letting shit go, not saying nothing, letting it fester until I pop and I lose my shit. And then everybody's looking at me like, you crazy. I'm not crazy. I am just at my wit's end now. Everybody has a breaking point. And then by that point, I've already had my breaking point. Again, also, people think, oh, well, you be loud and you say da 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 No, I'm passionate. I'm not arguing. It's not yelling. I'm not yelling at you if you take that way off my apologies, but I'm a very passionate person. So if I'm having a debate, <laughs> then I'm going to get into my debate, honey, and whatever. Um, but anyway, if you would like to come on the show, hit us up ambitiously the podcast at gmail.com. Ambitiously the podcast at gmail.com. I'm scrolling at the bottom of the screen, and it is available in the description as well. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Join the conversation. Drop in, drop in, drop in, drop a comment. Call in, text 443-850-4828-443-850-4828. Um, I, I have permission to play the videos that I'm playing. Look, be ready for Thorough Thursday. It's coming. It's probably going to be, it's, well, no problem. It's going to be a pre-recorded show, but it's coming. So check that out when you get a chance. Um, looking for us on social media, IG, it's at Miss underscore Ambitiously ENT. On Facebook, it's at Ambitiously. On YouTube, it's Ambitiously the Podcast. Um, you know what I mean? Just look it up. It'll pop up. Trust me, I know I'll be YouTubing myself. I mean, I'm look, searching for myself on YouTube, so I know it's going to pop up. Like, share, and subscribe to this podcast. Every like, every share, and every subscription is greatly appreciated. And... And it, it'll just make me happy that you did that. That's the free way to support this show, by the way. It doesn't cost you anything to like. It doesn't cost you anything to share the link. And it definitely don't cost you anything to subscribe. So just do that. Check out our website, www.ambitiouslyentertainment.com, www.ambitiouslyentertainment.com. I do not want to put the cash app on the screen because it's been on the screen the whole freaking time I've been live. So cash app below. You see it. It's right there. Cash app. Uh, also make sure you subscribe to our um, coffee.com profile or page or whatever um, ambitiously ENT anything I do is going to be ambitiously ENT it's an entertainment company it's not just a podcast by the way we do marketing we do management 
Um, I'm working on this other thing. I'm not going to talk about it because I tried to do this thing with a person before, but I want to have all my ducks in a row. But we're bigger than just the podcast. Um, we also on Patreon as well. Ambitiously ENT. Big shout out to King Knox, my compadre. Uh, <laughs> he here every tap in t- um, every Tuesday for the tap in, my compadre. Um, you know, we get crazy with our little antics to, with each other, but that's how we do, and it's fun. And ain't nobody beefing, but check out his, he got a mixtape called No Hard Feelings, and he also has one called The Genesis. He has a few of them, but, um, you know, it is what it is. And um, let's see what else. Big shout out to the DJ. Doc, you said something about that, but yeah, big shout out to our DJ as well, Ru KD. Um, his information is scrolling below, and oh, I got the fire mix already. It's hot, so make sure you tune in for um, Fire Friday so you can hear the new mix that he, he did. Um, we ready to go. It's, it's we ready. Um, and then remember to let me know how you feel about the mix so I can report it to him how y'all feel about the mix too. Um, and that's that. Uh, okay, so let's go back to these comments real quick. Um, uh, Shout out to um, DJ Rukesi. Are you crazy? Yeah, yeah. Because are you crazy? Um, worldwide, <laughs> we are worldwide. I'm tired of moving. Oh, Buki, I know you are. It's going to be over soon and then you'll get settled and you'll be in a great space and, you know, everything. And then you'll be you'll be back, back in your, in your element. You know what I mean? Like, mm, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. It'll be over soon, though. You'll be done. Top flight. Catch the vibes with Cat Lee. I'm relaxing after a hard day of moving like y'all should. Yeah, y'all definitely should be relaxing. But, Doc, you need to kick your feet up, have a drink or something. I don't know. But you need to do something. Unwind. I know. I don't know. I'm not going to say that because I've known some men that like taking baths, but I don't know about bubble baths. So take a nice hot bath or a nice hot shower. Turn on some music. Vibe out. Just vibe out. That's all I'm saying. And the forever late King Knox. See, that's why I can't tell him. <laughs> that's why I can't tell him about today. Because then he going to be, he feel like he going to have something to hold against you. And I can't let that happen. I can't. So we're going to keep that our secret. <laughs> we're going to keep that our little secret. Because <laughs> he going to be like, oh, oh, really? And then... That's how Knox get down, y'all. You know I'm trying to tell you. Um, <laughs> trying to tell you. That's how you get down. Not telling him. I'm just going to keep that between you and I what happened. Because that's how. Mm. <laughs> not my boo. Not my doc. I refuse to be a part of the shenanigans. But um, it is what it is. Mom's the word. Yes, I'm not saying nothing. Mm-mm. Hopefully he won't go back and watch this episode either. And then know that I'm... I'm <laughs> I ain't snitch, but whatever. Um, I'm not trying to be the op. You called me the op once before. I'm not snitching. I'm not. I'm not. I'm shutting up. Anyway, um, <laughs> man, doing these shows, me doing these shows also serves as not just, uh, it's not advice to you. Not at all. It's just sometimes it's really self reflection, but I got to serve it to you in a way that maybe it can um, rest resonate with you you feel me so when i'm talking i'm not necessarily talking about you but maybe some things that i've been going through and so i sit down and i'm okay these are the things that i want to talk about on what and why wednesday and so that's what it is um first things first mind your business everybody's business is not your business it's not stuff on media mondays where i tell you everybody's business because i'm nosy look i was all in doc business um, i'm nosy like that so i tell you everybody's business on media monday so come here on media monday and then you could be nosy but otherwise just mind your business and make sure you tap check in and tap in we're gonna have doc we're gonna have knocks in the building we're gonna have some fun you know what I'm saying? So make sure you're here for that. And, oh, my boo. See, this is why Doc is needed. He do stuff like this. Remember to tell your babies that they are amazing. Encourage them. They need that encouragement. School is starting back up. My baby start tomorrow. Um, And they need that encouragement. So tell them that they are the greatest of all times. You see Doc put it on the screen because he know what time it is. Tell them babies that they are the greatest of all times. They need that 
juice. They need that encouragement. So tell them nothing wrong with encouraging your babies to be great. Um, if they want to work for NASCAR, then tell them to be best NASCAR driver, pit boss, commentator, or whatever the hell else they do over there in NASCAR. I don't know. I've never worked there. Not really in the NASCAR either, but you know, you know, kids got dreams. Um, if they want to be a, um, a, a when they want to work for NASA, tell them to be the best astronaut, engineer, freaking receptionist, janitor, secretary, or whatever the hell else they do over there in NASA. I don't know. I've never worked for NASA, but I do know they have a lot to do with space. Um, but whatever it is, just encourage them to be the greatest of all times, the GOAT, and that's it. It's plain and simple. Stay in lane. Everybody's lane is not your lane, so just stay in yours because you jump in mine, you get high. Yeah. Mm -mm. You don't want her, child. You don't want her. It's a storm of brewing, and you don't want her. You want her. She's nice, sweet, kind, and cuddly, and all of that good stuff. So lovable. You want her. That's the one you want. Or at least her. Because, baby, baby, let me tell you something. If I'm purring, I'm a happy, happy, happy girl. So, yeah, you want her. Or the nice, sweet cat. But you don't want the lioness to pop out. She ain't that nice. Um, and what usually happens when you jump in somebody else's lane is a collision. And who the fuck needs that? Nobody. So just stay in your lane. Nobody needs it. And the difference between jumping in people's lanes and minding business is you can mind business, you can mind other people's business from afar, but you're inserting yourself when you jump into somebody's lane into some shit that has nothing to do with you. So stay in your lane. Pick and choose your battles wisely. Every battle is not yours to fight. Some battles, like I had to learn that, and it took me five years to learn that I, this is not a battle that I'm willing to fight. Every battle is not your battle to fight. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just got to gracefully bow out and go ahead about your business. Worry about the war because we all know there's a war going on out, going on outside. And I'm being honest with you. I'd rather fight the war than fight these little po bullshit, petty-ass battles. So just pick and choose your battles wisely. Now, I have to get out of here. I love you guys very, very much. I appreciate you for all the love and support let me see what i'm gonna put on the screen before i get out of here um all the love and support and loyalty because i do have some loyal ones on my side and i appreciate all of the loyalty man and loyal people who are to come by so i appreciate you doc i appreciate you rock even though you only come to see my my tatas i appreciate you too um knox rukezi like i appreciate loyal people so thank you Thank you in advance. And um, with that being said, I got to get out of here. We got school in the morning. I need to go to bed. She need to go to bed. We need to go to bed. But I love you guys. Be safe out here. Stay out of trouble. Doc, don't be out here um, being a non-Brazilian man, but a Brazilian man. You know where we going with this. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. Just, just be easy and be chill. Um, I hope that you catch Friday, Doc. I do, but I understand if you can't, you're in the middle of moving, but I do love how you still here anyway, and you got a lot going on, babes. Um, you might be driving. You might got to deal with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want you having no accidents or nothing, so be safe. If you can't make it, you can't make it. It's all good. I hope, um, I hope to be um, good by Monday, and I, 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 I hope you are too. Just for your sanity and you, so you can relax and, you know, get into finally get into the vibe that you need to be in with all this moving stuff you got going on. Ah, but I appreciate you, Doc. I do. Thank you very much for trying to be here for me when you can. I do. I appreciate you. But with that being said, I got to get out of here. Y'all be safe. Stay out of trouble. Bye. Bye.